My mother came out of nowhere. I mean, came out of nowhere. She saw us sneaking out the house and she, she said, she said, where are you taking my baby? And the witch said, it's no longer your child. He belongs to me. And my mother said, oh, no way. And she grabbed, my mother grabbed me by the arm and was pulling me. And the witch was pulling me. And I was going back and forth hmm. like, a, <laughs> like a tug of war. And uh, something happened to where they got me away from my mother. They were going towards the back door. And before they can get me out the back door, it's like they both saw something that was so big and, and, and it scared them. They let me go and they, they ran out the door. And I don't know what they saw, but I believe it was my mother was praying and God must have sent an angel that prevented them from taking me down to Port-au-Prince. Uh, you know what I also found pretty interesting about this, these two powers that are sort of uh, in, in competition with each other is uh, this witch used to put curses on people. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, uh, you, you broke into a realm where you could leave your body? Explain right, that. Right, right. I can astral project. I could throw my hand through glass and not be cut. I could put a match under my hand and not be burned. I could do all kinds of different things. One particular time I had a couple of friends of mine who went and got saved. And I mean, they were really saved. And I, and I didn't like the idea they got saved because I felt like they left me there in that realm. And so I sent out a, a couple of spirits after them. And I said, you go there and you curse them. You destroy everything they're doing. Those little spirits came back to me and they said, we can't touch them. I said, go back and put a curse on them. I command you, orders you to do so. And they came back to me again and said, we can't touch them. They're protected. So I asked you to project out of my own body. And I went to see the reason why I tell these spirits. And then they come back. And I know I've sent them to do other Stick around. Back in those days, Sid, you know, it was different from these days. They taught you to... Stay with, stay with the man for the children's sake. And a lot of the, the old school women, uh, they did that for the sake of the children. And my mother was one. She was one that believed that. Okay, these spirits are communicating with you now on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And one, they even taught you as a young child how to get high off of a melting, uh, what, a plastic gun? All kinds of stuff. I won't go in to say what it is because, oh. you know, in case somebody won't hear about that. All kinds of different things. See what happened. I wanted to shoot heroin with my brothers. I used to watch them tie up and get ready and, and hit the main line and stuff like that. And I wanted to shoot that. I, and I was only about four or five years old. And they said, you're too young. You can't, you, can't shoot. you can't shoot up right now. But I really wanted to. And they said, no. And they pushed me out of the room. And so I heard this voice says, oh, you don't have to. You don't have to wait for them. I'll show you what to do to get high. This voice. And I could feel the presence right over my shoulder and he showed me what to do and so at four years old I listened to this this voice this evil spirit and I started I started what's called huffing they call it huffing and and uh, well, let's fast forward though. okay okay so this voice teaches you how to get high um, <laughs> as a kid how to put this stuff together you hear this voice again that tells you how to get super high, super high. yeah tell me about that yeah um, I was 15 just turned 15 and and uh, this voice said, you've never really been high. I said, why don't, you, why don't you get this real super high so you can brag and boast, you know, tell all your friends and all the drug people in the community, in the neighborhood, in the hood, that you, you know, you can hold your dope. And so he told me what to do. He told me to get the cocaine, the weed, the tools, and some pills, these two. Fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. <laughs> and this voice tells you to put all this stuff yeah, on. What were the pills? There's some pills that is so strong. You take one pill, you cut that in half, and you cut that half in half, and it'll keep you high for eight days. Just the half of the half. Hmm. I took about three or four of those, ah. smoked some weed, about five or six hundred dollars for cocaine all at one time, and, and plus some beer. And I hated beer, but I was at this, 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 uh, this bar, sitting there at the bar, and the guy said, we well, are going to drink or go home. So the guy, I think it was a part of the enemy too for this guy. I knew I was underage, and he mm -hmm. still gave me the beer on top of everything else I've taken. And then I overdosed, overdosed of drugs. Stopped my heart. It was just, just too much. <laughs> well, that's what the devil wanted to do. Mm -hmm. He wanted to kill him because he knows he's making an earthquake now for God. Thank God. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to... It's Supernatural. Sid Roth has found the key to worldwide revival. This is God's time to re... We now return to It's Supernatural. 
Hello, Sid Roth here with Earthquake Kelly. Demons told this 15-year-old kid how to get high. Their intent was to kill him. He had four different drug combinations in large quantities, and he took it, and he passes out, and his buddies, what'd they do, take you in a car? And what, would, what did they want to do with you? Just take me home. What happened? Well, um, on the way home, I died. And these group of spirits came out, the same ones that were talking to me, came out and grabbed me, snatched me out of my body, and was pulling me down. I mean, I was going down into a pit. And then when I got to, the, to this pit, they started tormenting me. It looked like they was coming from everywhere. They were in my mouth, they were in my eyes, they were hitting me with all kinds of things. They were yelling and telling me that I worked for them, and it was a trap and a setup, and you did all our bidding for us, and now you're in hell. And it was a horrible thing. And Were you really in hell? I was in hell. For sh hell is a real place for sure. It's real. Huh. It is real. It's not made for us. It's designed and made for the devil and his angels. And that's where I wind up at. That overdose of drugs was a trick from the pits of hell to get the drugs were a trick to set me up to stop my heart to get me lost for eternity. What, what did you see? Oh, I saw all kinds of horror and miserable. It's a, it's a lonely, miserable ugly, stinky, sulfur, smelling, nasty, pitiful, horrible place that you can't even hardly describe it. But did did you hear people say anything? Oh, you anything? can hear all kinds of promises and people screaming and yells and sounds of, that just torment 24 hours, about seven days a week of, of nothing but misery and torment. And I was down there amongst them with them and all that torment. But there was some, some hands of light came down inside of that place in that pit that I was in and grabbed me by my shoulders and started pulling me out of there. And I could see, and even as I was pulling out of there, said those spirits were still trying to hold on to me, saying, he's ours, he belonged to us. But that the hand of light pulled me and took me out of there and put me back in my body. And, and it says, because of your mother's prayers, that's what I'll never forget, you were spared, and because you were chosen to do a work for us, Said, but he kept saying, because of your mother's prayer. Who, who was saying this? I mean, that was God's voice. That was God who said, because of your mother's prayers. And that's what I heard. And then I, I, I sat up and I said, oh, oh, God, I've been to hell. And, and, and at that point, I didn't even know to thank God because I was so wicked. That's such a wizard and everything like that. But I knew that something had happened. But, but you were still, you, you were kind of messed up physically. Well, I, still, I was messed up really bad. I was messed up, and my mind was messed up, the optic nerve, because it, it, uh, it messed up parts of my body. I realized I couldn't walk, and so when I came back in, in, into my body, the people that was driving the car, they opened the car door, and they said, get out. And I tried to walk, but I fell over to the ground, because the lower extremities didn't work. And so I had to pull the top of my body all the way up the stairs. Then I, I rang the doorbell, and one of my sisters came to the door, and us, you know, bringing from that background, they know an overdose, because we had many people to die and overdose in and around us, and uh, she could tell. And um, Okay, shortly thereafter, one of your sisters invites you to church. Mm -hmm. You're doing drug deals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, even seeing how, how could you still be doing drug deals? Messed up in the mind. Hit okay, so you, you go, why did you even go with your sister? Because she kept telling me, uh, you need to be saved. And at that time, I didn't, I didn't want it to, even though I just went to hell, but I, I, there was a big shipment of drugs coming in, and uh, my cut was a million dollars. And at 15 years old, a million dollars, you know, could have bought an extra hamburger or something, like, you know, so. <laughs> okay, You're, you, you get into that church, I mean, the, the, this is the only word I can come with, this is crazy. You get into this church, what happens? I get into the church, I'm sitting in the back, she convinced me to go. I'm real mad because I didn't want to be around uh, Pentecostal or anything. I'm real mad, and I said, sit me in the back. So she sits me in the back, and the preacher is preaching, and, and uh, I said, okay, good, I'm finished. The next night she said, oh, you're going back? I said, no, I'm not going back to church no more. I'm finished with church. And I got, get out here, I got the drug deal, big one, the real big one, the biggest one we ever had. She said, no, you're going to church. So I said, okay, I'll go to church. About two or three days of that, the preacher said, hey, you, back in the back, young man. And I didn't know he was talking to me. I thought he was talking to somebody else. So I, everybody in the church turns around. So I turned around, too, and said, hey, young man, he's talking to you. <laughs> but it was nobody else back there but me. I said, oh, man, he's talking to me. And so he said, come up here in the front. God wants to save you. 